Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you already know what band we're talking about. If you're not, you'll need to go back and watch the last two videos to get in line with what's going on here today. Anyways, uh, what I have done is I've decided to start doing clusters or triple plays of artists that I think I really need to cover their catalog a little better than I have so far. And in this particular episode, uh, we are going to be taking a look at the last of this trilogy with the Beatles, Abbey Road. That's right. I started with Rubber Soul, then I got in uh, Sgt. Peppers. This is Abbey Road. I've already covered Let It Be Naked. So, reason why is I'm a fan of this period of the Beatles. I'm not a fan so much of the earlier pe period of the Beatles, which I talk about in the Rubber Soul review. So, Abbey Road. Let me tell you a secret about Abbey Road with me. My favorite Beatles album. I love the Abbey Road, man. This is, it is odd though because I have yet to pick up the digital remaster of Abbey Road and I really should. Uh, the reason I don't have the digital remaster of Abbey Road is I already owned this copy and when the digital remasters came out and I was picking them up, I wasn't exactly in a great financial position at the time. So I wasn't able to pick up as many of the remasters as I'd like to have, and I bought albums I didn't have as opposed to buying albums I already did have. So, the sound on this version is not as good as the remasters. If you have a choice between this basic version or a vinyl copy, get the vinyl copy. If you got a choice between the digital remaster and vinyl, that's up to your personal preferences. I personally would get the digital remaster, but I'm enough of a fan of Abbey Road that I will buy the album, plus I'll buy the digital remaster, and then one of my kids will end up with this version. That's how it works. That's how it works in my family. <laughs> I remaster, they get the old ones. Recycle. Give it to the one, give them the albums they grew up with. They can go buy their own remasters. <laughs> Anyways. Let's get into the album. Uh, so the album opens up with Come Together. Who? Now, we never really talk ever about Ringo Starr as a drummer. Because there's very few times that Ringo Starr really needs to be talked about as a drummer. Um... Come Together, though, Ringo's drum riff on Come Together. That was something else, man. Simple, but awesome and cool. That do 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 Cool, man. I, I don't want to demonstrate it on the drums. Sorry. Um, just so we're clear, the Billion Dollar Babies drum thing... That might happen once in a while where I pull out drums or I pull out another instrument, but not something I'm going to do too often. Um, so, after Come Together, we get into something. Oh, now, if you know me, you already know who does something. That is a George Harrison song. And as such, I automatically love it. You know, there, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, the one George Harrison song that is on Sgt. Pepper's, not one of the most outstanding George Harrison songs, but something, uh, there is a romance and a longing and an appreciation in that song that's just absolutely beautiful. I often don't like lovey-dovey kind of ballads, but something, oh, something gets a pass because something is just, oh, yeah, that's a special kind of romance in something. Uh, after that, we're on to Maxwell Silverhammer. That's a fun song. Nothing like an upbeat serial killer song. This is the type of song that would have inspired Alice Cooper, okay? You know, just... 
upbeat, fun, playful, and all psycho killer. 100%. I mean, you just can't help but appreciate a song like Maxwell Silverhammer, or at least I can't, because I have such a wonderful sense of humor. And that's it, Maxwell Silverhammer, that, that, you gotta have a dark sense of humor to truly appreciate that song. Um, oh darling, if you're one of my regular viewers and you've already heard me talk about Across the Universe, the movie and its soundtrack, Oh Darling on here is kind of a fun song. It's a good blueprint song because I love the version in Across the Universe. And I actually like it done as the duet it was done as in Across the Universe with the two people singing it that were doing it. And it sounds honestly better than the original version as far as I'm concerned. And it's I, I, I love the heaviness to it because there's this great potential heaviness to this song. And this song is fantastic. It is a magnificent blueprint for what could be an amazing song. I guarantee if you put this song in just the right hands today, it could be spectacular. Um, okay, after that, we get into a Ringo Starr song. Oh! All right, um... Man, Ringo takes a lot of crap. He does. I... Oh, you've already heard my views on him as a drummer. You know, he's, he's a drummer. He keeps the time. He, he, he plays. Um, but when we get into the Octopus's Garden, there's a lot of jokes about that. There's a lot of cheap shots. Why not? I actually like it. I think it's kind of it's kind of a fun follow-up to Yellow Submarine. It is. That that's how I see Octopus's Garden as a fun, playful follow-up to Yellow Submarine. And does it necessarily reflect the way the Beatles were at the time? Not 100%. A little bit. Not 100%. But I really, in the great scheme of the Beatles catalog, I would never want to leave out Octopus's Garden because there are so many fun little parts about it musically. You know? And the way it's all put together and everything like that. It's really... It's another one of those songs that I think is very underrated is unfairly mocked and really should be studied with a little more thought and, and viewed and listened, or not viewed, but listened to with a little more thought than it is. Ah, uh, I want you, she's so heavy. Good tune. Multitudes of covers by bands that I love. Until I heard the Hillstorm version. The Beatles was my ver favorite version. I actually preferred it over Typo Negative's version. And the Typo Negative version is a little fun. It's a little playful. It's not entirely, you know, I want you, she's so heavy. It's also got a few other things mixed into it. But good tune. Really good tune. It's fun. After that, we get into Here Comes the Sun, yet another George Harrison song. And of course, I love it. I love it. How could you not love Here Comes the Sun? Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. Do, 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 Good, fun. It's an uplifting song, you know, and really when you think about it, coming after I Want You, She's So Heavy to go into Here Comes the Sun, it's the perfect way to pick things back up again. Because I Want You, She's So Heavy is really great and heavy, you know, I mean, it covers it, right? Uh, and and kind of just, that one has this real drag to it, but you get to Here Comes the Sun and it's just like, wow. Wow, man. 
Love it. Okay. There is one particular Beatles song. I both understand and don't understand people's fascination with it. I don't like the song. I have never liked any version of it. And I have a version of Alice Cooper doing it because, yes, Alice Cooper has performed some Beatles covers. This particular one was actually... Recorded for the Sgt. Pepper's movie starring the Bee Gees. And the song was also used in the Across the Universe soundtrack. And where they used it in the Across the Sound Universe soundtrack, it makes sense and it works. And I like it in the movie. And if you know your music and you've seen either one of those movies, you already know what song I'm talking about. If you've never seen either of those movies, you really should watch Across the Universe Sgt. Pepper's starring the Bee Gees. You may want to avoid a little bit. It's kind of cool a little bit. Anyways, I am talking about because. <sighs> okay. <sighs> no, I don't like... I like what they do with the song. I like how it's done. I like everything about it in theory. I just don't like the song. I don't like it. I can't. I just, I, I can't like it. I'm sorry. I can't like it. I've tried. I've tried, man. I've got a version with Alice Cooper doing it. I like the Alice version. It's interesting, but I can't. I can't. No. No. I just, I'm sorry. I don't like because. I don't. Uh, you never give me your money follows that up. It's kind of a throwback to the older days a little bit. Uh, musically, I find a little more poppy-esque. Uh, not a bad tune. Not a huge song for me, though. Now, I don't remember the story of what was supposed to be the big medley at the end of the album because that's how it was supposed to be there was supposed to be this big medley with all the songs how it was supposed to snake through all of them to create this one giant kind of song and they ended up busting it up on the album instead because they couldn't get it right or something I sorry I don't once again I don't remember the story but uh, so I don't remember how it applies to all these tracks but basically it starts at Sun King which is the next tune and that's why some of these songs feel kind of weird and short and cut oddly. Uh, that's part of the reason it was the way that they ended up polishing it for the album release in the end because they couldn't get it to work right. Uh, the Doors had a similar problem as well. Um, I can't remember the song. They, they, uh, uh, something of the Lizard King. Sorry. I Yeah. Anyways. Too many Kings. Sun King is cool. Um, I don't mind it. I'm not a huge fan of it. it. To me, it's kind of a fluff track on here. It doesn't do much. Uh, mean Mr. Mustard is another one where it's not a bad tune. It's fun. It's kind of playful and whatnot. Uh, then you go on to Polythene Pam. And once again, you know, it's kind of like, all right, it's not a bad tune. And then you got, she came in through the bathroom window. It was kind of like, oh, all right. Yeah. But now when you listen to them on here, because the way they're broken up, they all kind of feel like, all right, it's, yeah, it's all right. If you kind of compress them together, all right, if you take out the space in between the songs and let it actually properly boom, 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 it actually feels better when you're doing it. And that is one thing that I really think it, it fails with, at least on this version of the CD. I, I really do need to get around it, to get my hands on the digitally remastered version to see if maybe they fix that up a little bit. Um, she came in through the bathroom window. 
once again, isn't too bad. Um, I think out of the so far running through, it's the one that kind of catches me a little bit, but not a lot. Golden Slumbers is another cool tune. Uh, Carry That Weight. I like Carry That Weight. Um, I really dig it. And then that goes into the end, which isn't bad. But once again, this is all kind of supposed to be more like a story narrative, the way it goes through. So looking at it as individual tracks, the way they break it up on here, think of it as trying to look at 2112 as individual tracks, you know? Yeah, you can look at the first two, you know, a lot of people, you automatically do um, Overture and Temple of Syrinx together. And then everybody kind of forgets about the back half. But imagine looking at each one as individual songs and trying to kind of compare it. It doesn't work. And that's that's what the problem is here. You know, like if you were listening to the whole thing through, if you start at the Sun King and then you come all the way down to at least the end and the end is the next track after Carry That Weight. It's a really great sequence with a really cool vibe. And I really think that whatever it was that cho that made them choose to do what they did the way they did on here, it, it shouldn't have ever been listed as individual tracks. I really think it should have been done like they do with 2112, where it's 2112, and then it shows that there is a breakdown of separate pieces. I think trying to appeal to the masses may have been what kind of set people off on that, but... Uh, but yeah, so Carry That Weight is a great tune. I really love Carry That Weight. Um, the End and Her Majesty are good as well. But the problem is that whole entire side, that whole section from, honestly, from the Sun King, I know I already said stopping at She Came In Through the Bathroom, but you got to go all the way down. You got to go all the way down to Her Majesty. The whole section as one giant side, as one giant piece. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think it was a great way for the Beatles to close out their recording sessions more or less together. Uh, what most people don't realize, because Let It Be was the last album released, they don't realize that actually this was the last album recorded. Let It Be was recorded before that. It just took a lot of time to polish up and then release later on. This was actually the last one where the Beatles were in the studio together. And, well, depending on how you... Okay, there's going to be people that have debates about that. Either way, it's a great way to close out the Beatles as a whole with that being a giant track. I really wish they would have released it as a giant track and give it a little more to it that way. The downside to that would have been they would have created this whole giant mythology all of a sudden right at the end of what was turning into the Beatles' end. <sighs> Anyways, great album. My favorite Beatles album. Remember, second half of the album, you have to listen to as a second half. Do not listen to it as individual songs. Individual songs is not anywhere near as enjoyable as a giant complex structure running through a narrative. It's very enjoyable. At least I think so. So, let me know what you think. There's the comment section. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, peace, love, take care, and that's it for now for the Beatles. We'll eventually get back to them.